Okay, there's been uh, even more uh, response and interest in the nucleus uh, for videos and pictures and measurements and everything than I expected. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, uh, I already pulled the chassis. I'm going to tear this down and let you look at it and take some more uh, measurements, I guess, uh, just to, uh, I'll throw a ruler on it, just so you can see uh, some of the uh, some of the measurements. But at any rate, so uh, this is my uh, 6XC barrel action. It's got the uh, Brad's I think it's a BFF brake, self-timing, and uh, it's a Schillen barrel and a 6XC. It's the uh, select stainless match. And so here we go. I'm going to tear this uh, apart. So we will start with the bar lock. So as you can see that uh, it's been clamped back together. And uh, let me grab my calipers and I'll show you where this is at. That's zeroed out. So it is right there. Uh, can you see that? There we go. 52 thousandths is about where we're at. 54 thousandths. 55 thousandths. Okay. So then we'll pull the pull this. So that's a quarter turn just about and here's the other turn. And now it's loose. So you loosen that. So now it's spread back out. And so now it's at uh, 92 thousandths. Can you see that? 93 thousandths. Right in there. So all that force closes this and pushes the barrel this way because it uh, is locked into the threads here. And so as it closes, it pulls these threads against oh, the barrel against so it locks it like that. Whereas when you turn it, it's going to torque it on, but part of the torque is overcoming the, the friction of the threads sliding against each other. Whereas this, with the bar lock, you can tighten it down, and without the threads, the friction of the threads turning over themselves and potentially galling and ruining and stripping, it just applies the pressure this way against the threads as the barrels pulled out uh, because the the way that the bar lock works. Okay, let me grab the bar lock wrench. So it's it's this is loose, but the bar lock is tightened on it a little bit. So we need to uh, just loosen that a little bit. And now you see it's gone back to uh, 51 thousandths. So that's when it's uh, now sliding inside of that. So I'm going to back off the, uh, the, uh, the barrel nut. And so you can see on the nucleus there's a lot more room than the Savage. So you have extra threads uh, about about that much. So there's plenty of room even if the threads were a little bit shorter. So I don't think you have to worry about any barrels that are a Savage Prefit not fitting because this distance is shorter in the uh, in the uh, Remington style short actions. If you look, uh, Savage short action is actually kind of a different beast. Um, so if you look at it, it is just a hair longer. Um, so if you look at the the uh, ejection port, 
it's longer the uh, where the bolt handle is you know if I match up the bolt handles or the back of the action uh, you know it's significantly longer but the important part relatively speaking is where the bolt head how far it protrudes this way and so the savage bolt head uh, it locks down right there and so the savage bolt head as far as it protrudes in it's going to protrude in about eight tenths a little bit more whereas the nucleus where does it stop I'm gonna get a marker here It's a dry erase marker, so should be good. So it is about about nine tenths, so a tenth of an inch longer. But the difference is in this. This is less than uh, one and a half inches. It's one point. Four, six, but this is one point five. So I don't know. Maybe they're about the same. But uh, on one of my other videos, I can tell you that when head spaced on the Criterion barrel, this one, it had it only had about. Uh, that much room I could fit the, the screwdriver in about that far so that was how much space extra space I had on the bar lock for uh, this action on this criterion barrel I had about that much extra whereas with the nucleus I've got it about uh, got a lot more room there so once I've done that then the uh, barrel just twists right out. I have to say that it took a lot of effort. Uh, I almost needed to break out my barrel vise, but if you look inside here, the threads, uh, you know, it has the finish on that. And so when I first threaded the, uh, the barrel in, I just hand threaded it in like this. And literally I could go a few rotations and it would just be so stiff that I couldn't, I could barely turn it. And so I had to back it out and thread it in a little bit further and back it out and thread it in. And so I think what happened is I just uh, wore down the finish. So if you're like me and you have a little bit of a problem threading it in at the beginning, uh, I wouldn't sweat that. Just make sure and uh, and um, just keep working it in and out. Uh, and again, this was a, a shilling barrel, so their threads may have been a little bit, a little bit off. But frankly, I'd rather have it uh, tight like that than loose. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see in here. Let me bring this up. See if we can get some focus here. There we go. Not sure if you can see in there, but right at the bottom. Uh, come on, focus. There we go. Maybe it'll do that. Right at the bottom. There. You can see some of those shavings. That's from the brass. And all I've done, I've cycled it probably a hundred times. But that is brass that's shaving off of my dummy round. I don't see my dummy round hit, sitting right here. But uh, so anyway, there's some brass shaving off the uh, the dummy round. And there's the bolt face inside of the nucleus. And then the threads. So that's the bolt face. And there's the uh, notch for the... notch for the uh, recoil lug. Alright, let's 
kick that light back down. So here's the nucleus, and I have to say that after cycling it, uh, I'm sure whoever got one, a uh, new one, it probably felt a little more uh, stiff than when they were at SHOT Show. I think I saw a comment like that on, on Sniper's Hide, but uh, I can tell you that it has uh, worked its, its way smoother. And uh, it is really nice. Um, shout out to uh, Huber. This is a uh, two-stage trigger. I, I had them set it at a, it's a two-stage, so a pound for the first stage, and then a uh, pound and a half for the second stage. So that's cumulative. And... Uh, it is amazing, and I love this feature. I'd never seen it before. I'm relatively new to the uh, to the Remington world, but uh, this is very cool. It's a uh, it is a lower safety, so you know if on if on if it you know it is on safe because you can't get into the trigger, and so to take it off safe, you kick it forward. My only concern is you know as you're bringing it.